Yeah. So we help students remove loneliness, which loneliness a lot of, in a lot of simple ways is no one knows you. You can know 500 people, but no one knows you. And you need a coach, you need a guide, you need a process, just like I do in all areas of life. We need to be known. And it's good to get it out with trusted, safe people that who, who have experience with this. Well, greetings. I'm excited to be here today. Uh, we're, as, as we approach year end, we have so many different organizations uh, that have been reaching out and trying to decide what they want to do, what they can do, what they're able to do at year end. And I thought it might be really helpful for us to share a success story uh, share a story of a small nonprofit organization that came into 2021 uh, with varying results for their year-end efforts and really focused in on a lot of the methods and strategies that we brought up in our videos. And so I have with me Today, Brian Davidson, who is the president, executive director of Whisper. And Brian, would you tell us a little bit uh, out of the box about Whisper and what your organization does? Thanks, Jim. It's great to be with you. Whisper is a grassroots movement that is addressing the loneliness epidemic. And I know you, Jim, and others know that we have a loneliness epidemic. 73% of Gen Z in 2020 said they feel alone. Um, in uh, 2012, that was 27% of seniors. So we've seen a pretty big escalation there. The whole premise behind Whisper is in order to change the culture, you must first start with changing the conversation. So we use that approach to what we do, but we focus on empowering students, mostly uh, high school and middle school. Uh, we're in 16 schools. We empower students to change the culture of their school through the power of a simple conversation. We believe that connection changes everything, but conversations is the bridge to connection. And so we don't really talk at students. We empower students to lead the charge and to create these movements in their school to, to transform the culture of their school. And we've just seen incredible results with Whisper uh, transforming high schools and middle schools and are uh, on the verge of growing uh, exponentially. Well, Brian, we're going to focus a little bit today on some of the things uh, I know as a leader and, and so many in our audience are just like you. They're leaders of nonprofit organizations. They are juggling a million tasks, a million to do's, just like you are. And then you've got that one area, that development area, that fundraising, you've got you've to raise money to help sustain your organization. And that can seem very daunting. Uh, I know you started implementing a lot of strategies that you saw in our videos and you and I connected up more in 2021. And, uh, but tell us what uh, things were like prior to 2021 from your mindset, your, your thought process uh, was, was raising money a necessary evil? Uh, has that changed at all? Uh, tell us what things were like prior to 2021. Well, Jim, I don't want to go back to prior to 2021 because it was disorganized, disconnected, sleepless nights, just feeling like we could do better. I need a process that works for us. You would have moments where we would inspire people with our stories because we're seeing impact. And these are impact that uh, is fun to want to support. but. Uh, feeling like I'm not cultivating uh, the soil very well, uh, <clears throat> having awesome moments, but what about the ongoing momentum, which made me feel really guilty <laughs> and um, just frustrated. Um, so it was tough. We definitely had some wins, saw some great things happen, but, uh, you know, 2021 was a lot better um, than 2020 and before. I'm thankful for that. Now, how about from the standpoint of 
your fundraising efforts? What what kinds of things uh, did you get started? Well, I'll say that even before 2021, we really followed the guide of how to do dinners that you teach and recommend your processes. And that was our biggest win every year. Um, but 2021, because we enacted some new things, it made the dinner so much better as well. And so I think the biggest things were just, the biggest thing was getting a plan that uh, just resonated with us and that worked. Now, this is no shortcut. This isn't easy, but the, 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 the guide and the plan and the process that you recommend that we began to put into action was, uh, was very hard. Um, but it's good hard. It's working on good things because it produced fruit. In the past, our end of the years weren't that good, unfortunately. And it was always like, what's wrong with me? Why can't I do the end of the year well? And all these other people do it well. And we'd send out a letter and I'd make some calls, but we didn't do it right. The timing wasn't as good as we did uh, in 2021. Uh, the follow-up, we just we just didn't have it thought through. And so a couple of those things that we did were around September, around this time last year, you were really recommending that we begin to, uh, you know, take the next hundred days and, um, and, and make sure we do it very well. And part of that was really figure out who your critical few are. Your critical few are going to reach the many. And most organizations are funded by just a critical few. And it's similar to what we do in schools. It's the few that reach the many. You only need a small team of change makers to transform a, a high school or a middle school. So I get that. And so just starting to make those calls and try to thank them, leave them voicemails of just thank or get on the phone with them or try to meet with some of them in this, uh, you know, October-ish month. And then, um, and, but, but, then uh, but then as far as working on specifically our, uh, our donor letter that goes out our end of the year appeal, begin to craft a appeal for, I think we had like maybe like 50 to 60, don't, it's, it may not be perfect, my memorying, uh, maybe 50, 60 in our 20%. And each one of them got a specific ask in the letter. And they got their letter early, early on in November. And so the goal was hopefully we had been in some kind of contact with them, you know, uh, a month or two before they got the letter for one thing, but then plan on giving them a call early in November and, and ask them if they would respond to that specific ask. It could be a $10,000 gift. It could be a $5,000 gift. But each one of them was crafted differently. And then we had another 80% letter go out. And we tried to call some of them. But even in December, really honing in on that 20% made the huge difference where we went with these not good end of the years to uh, right under, I think, 50000 um, for us, that was a big, huge number for end of the year. And it potentially is more because of January, what trickled in. And then after the end of the year, we had our dinner in March. So just a couple months later, and we had the best dinner, the most effective dinner. We had committed about 130, over $130,000 committed at the dinner and it was just vibrant. It was exciting. It just felt like we we got a lot better. So the timing for us was really helpful, Jim, because uh, we focus on loneliness and isolation, and we just had a pandemic. So we're really poised to grow to help students know how to remove their own loneliness, learn how to have conversation skills uh, to a very dark uh, generation that's in desperate need. And so we we've gotten better at even the clarity of telling our story. Um, and we saw that really resonate as well. So I think it was a collision of the processes with the timing for us and people recognizing this has got to happen. Students need help. And we partner with churches even to reach some of those to help those schools. So it gives a way for the church to be more effective as well. So there's a little bit I could go into more processes and things, but the end of the year was just a game changer for us, Jim. Wow. Oh, Brian, thanks so much. I can hear some in our audience thinking, wow, November, you were you got out a letter early November. Uh, you called all these people. Brian, how did you mentally get over the hump? Because I know in the past 
you know, I think you had your letters going out just after Thanksgiving or even maybe the first week of, of December, getting it out early, making those calls, having those conversations. Uh, what, what did you have to overcome mentally, emotionally, maybe even a time commitment? What did you have to do to, to make that, that happen? Well, I, I needed to not be alone. That's for sure. I needed a coach. I needed some prodding. I needed some encouragement. Just like none of us need to be alone on any part of our journey, especially in this one. But it was dawning. You used that word earlier. Um, getting to be undaunted <laughs> was hard. And, and honestly, it's just, it's just the hard work uh, was hard. Um, you know, it's hard to sit there and just make tons of phone calls and follow up and try to make sure that, you know, try to be bold. Um, and, um, you know, I think there were times that I call you, Jim, and you were like, Brian, I mean, you're give them the opportunity to impact these students and be bold. And I was getting a little bit like, well, you know, I need to be, and I just, it was tough mentally and emotionally. It was definitely not easy. And I'll be honest, it's even now with it being September, I'm thinking already, well, it's going to be a tough couple months coming up here. This is going to be hard work, but it's vital work. It's vital work to do. Um, and calling all them mentally and emotionally, it affected me just from the standpoint of like, boy, I, I need to be in touch with these people more. Uh, I don't, I need to really be cultivating the soil, soil better. Um, or there's others that really aren't ready to get up asked that I need to really pay attention to and cultivate so that they know what we're doing and we have a relationship and they feel good about sowing their seeds into what we're doing. And so it hit a lot of emotions from, from uh, things that I need to do better, things that I'm not doing well enough, uh, needing help uh, others to be making phone calls. But uh, I'd say the hardest thing is just um, for my personality, it's hard to just sit there and make phone calls. <laughs> um, but it was, but it was worth it. It was good. And I'm going to do it again. Did I hit hundred percent of everybody? No. It was a lot of numbers and I didn't, but you know, I'm, I, I worked it and, uh, and I was very happy with the work that I did. You have the joy now of circling back to some of your partners and sharing with them because of your gift, this happened. Uh, share with our audience what having a little bit more money this year enabled your organization to do. Well, the biggest thing is in March, we were in six schools. Well, today we're in 16. Um, that's a lot of students. These are, most of these schools are, are a good bit of those schools are over 2,000, 2,500 students. These are large schools. Uh, we had even one school that was so successful. The superintendent said, I really want this in all of our middle and high schools. He didn't mandate it because he wasn't going to do that, but they all opted in. And tomorrow we have a training and Thursday for all eight schools, leaders from those schools um, and get to tell those stories uh, of what's going on. But it, it really is those individual stories. Like I think of David, who is a kid, he was an eighth grader and we would have donuts at our gatherings. And this is a middle school. So we would do it during the day and he would come get his donut, go to the back of the room. And he didn't say a word, just quiet. And, but he had a little spark in his eye. There's something about him. And one of the other guys, another guy named David, he kind of know adult leader said something about that guy. So I invited him in to one of our meetings. And, um, and I said, David, I'd like you to share. And cause they were student led, heavily student led. And uh, I remember him sharing at one of the, maybe in the next one or the one of the uh, gatherings that was coming up. And David got up there with, poise and commanded the room and he spoke from his heart and he was vulnerable because he just knew what we were doing he knew what we were addressing he knew there's a problem in the school and to see David all these weeks be this fearless and we say movements are inspired by uncommon fearlessness and uncommon relentlessness which is similar to development <laughs> development's happening by uncommon fearlessness and uncommon relentlessness and these movements happen because the students are that way. And we try to empower them to be that way and ignite them. And David's up there leading every week. And then we had this one big event. We had like a whisper week and 
We didn't know who was coming that night. And the students were like, I wonder who's going to come to this big bonfire. And we had 250, 300 students. I mean, this is not one of those, you know, they had like 800 and something students in the whole school. And we were just blown away. And David, get up and leading. And this is why we're here. And let's experience uh, these, these principles. And then I remember at the end of the night, um, even at the end of the night, da uh, David's dad picked him up and he didn't know about Whisper. Um, I think probably his mom did, I'm assuming. And I got to look at his dad and say, do you know your son's an eighth grader and he's impacted his entire school? And what he's done as an eighth grader, I'm looking at David telling him and affirming him of like, man, most people go through middle school. It's pretty bad. <laughs> and then most people go never have a movement that they've created ever in their life. And then I go inside, I look out the window and they're embracing. And it was sweet to see him and his dad and seeing David be this leader who can who uh, who's a world changer already and we've seen we got two guys that could be in the first round draft pick this year who are leaders of whisper uh we've got ivy league students princeton harvard and they look but even though they're smart and they had gifts they learned so these are the stories that i'm giving you jim to uh to share with these donors and they just melt you know just like just like i melt just thinking about sharing them and just story after story after story of the impact. Uh, they love to hear that. And they, that's what fires them up the most. Wow. And any last lessons for your co-laborers, your co-leaders that uh, are out there uh, kind of struggling, getting, getting through things, just try and make it day in and day out like you do. Uh, any life lessons or any lessons you'd like to leave with them as we wrap up here? Yeah. So we help students remove loneliness which loneliness a lot of in a lot of simple ways is no one knows you you can know 500 people but no one knows you and you need a coach you need a guide you need a process just like I do in all areas of life we need to be known and so having somebody like Jim for me and others who who are knowing I'm struggling with this I can't get over this wall um, don't hold that in that is not healthy for your soul it's good to get it out with trusted, safe people that who, who have experience with this. Um, and a lot of you are way more experienced than me and could probably help me in a lot of things. But it's never good to be alone. Obviously, we know who said that uh, first crisis in the Bible was and even sin. It was being alone. And um, and so I'm just so thankful for God to gift and anoint. Jim Dipsy to create these processes and be a conduit so that I could benefit from them. And I know, Jim, uh, I know this call isn't all about you, but you have been a huge blessing. You are a man who walks with God. You're full of life, full of encouragement. And so whether it's uh, learning the processes from you or just hearing you inspiring on YouTube or uh, uh, just really knowing you and getting to know you and your journey and uh, you getting to know me has just been incredible. You've been an incredible mentor, incredible blessing to me. And uh, I'm super grateful. And everyone needs a Jim Dempsey. If not a Jim Dempsey, everyone needs to put into plan your processes because they just work. They're just effective. Um, and they're just, they're just waiting to be done um, through all your platforms. Well, thanks, Brian. That means the world to me. And thank you for your service. And uh, it was, we're clearly seeing God work in and through you and uh, your wonderful wife and family and everybody who's involved. Uh, I know you've got a sea of volunteers that don't get the recognition, but uh, they, they make this happen as well, too. So it's such a, such a blessing. So, Brian, thanks again. And uh, we'll, uh, we'll keep you in our prayers for your year end efforts for sure. If you enjoyed what you heard, please subscribe to this channel and share this with your friends or colleagues. There's no cost to you. We're building a movement through a community of life changers, and it's my desire that by subscribing, you'll learn principles and practices that help you secure the resources necessary to accomplish your mission and change the world. Simply hit the subscribe button and click the all bell to be notified when the next video is released. We're also adding valuable content to our Life Changers Facebook group. So go out there to become a member as well. 
You can find the link in the description below. If you want to find out what to do and say during a meeting with a donor, watch this video and raise more money than ever before. Change some lives and better our world. I wish you the best as you strive to increase your income and reach the goal of becoming fully funded. Thanks a lot. See you in the next video.